Good evening and welcome. Tonight is Monday, December 11th, 2017. This is the regular City Council meeting for the City of St. Peter. It is 7 o'clock p.m. All, we'll call the meeting to order. All please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I may be seated, John. <laughs> the, everyone should have a copy of the uh, agenda in front of them. Are there any changes or corrections to the agenda? Dodd, is there a motion for approval? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. All in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next, we have the minutes from our November 27th, 2017 meeting. Those minutes appear on pages 5 through eight, are there any changes or correction to those minutes? If not, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. All in favor of the November 27th meeting minutes as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. Next up, we have visitors. We will address visitors who would like to speak to the council on any agenda <coughs> item. Seeing no one. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any item whatsoever? Seeing no one, we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda begins on detail on page 9 and concludes with the resolution on pages 37 to 41. And bear with me, it's lengthy. The following uh, includes the following budgeted purchases in excess of $7,500 to Eaton Cooper Power Cannon for electric meters for 2018 for $9,193.46, to Johnson Aggregate for loader rental for $6,500, to Hawkins water, for water treatment chemical not to exceed $39,500. To, for professional water technologies for water treatment uh, chemicals for $25,500. To Bolton and Menk for the Minnesota Square survey work for $9,000. There is a list, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there is a correction on page uh, 37. I believe the board or the overhead is right. For Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, it should say Brand instead of Carlin. But those. Uh, Assignments for those uh, liaison and commission appointments follow through and, we, and you can see those online or pick those up. I'm not going to read every one. Uh, Council Member Carlin is hereby appointed to serve as Mayor Pro Tem in my absence during the period of January 1, 2018 to December 31, 2018. The following board advisory board appointments, and these I will go through and I want to thank these people ahead of time. Uh, for the Civil Service Commission, Megan Rubel. Uh, to Economic Development Authority, Bradley DeVos. And the, here's an addition also, Mike Favor uh, for that same term, 2018 to 2023. For the Heritage Preservation Commits Commission, Joe Metzen, Larry Potts, and Terry Bergman, all for 2018 to 2020. To the Hospital Commission, John Lammert and Blake Kambelik. <coughs> For 2018 to 2022. For the Housing and Redevelopment Authority, Dennis Swenson, 2018 to 2022. To the Library Board, Roger Paris, James Nickris, and Sally Geary from 2018 to 2020. The Parks Board, Michael Luft, Ryan Cupcho, and Brian Fremo from 2018 to 2020. To the Planning Commission, Andrew Davis for 2018 to 2020. The Tourism and Visitors Bureau, Keith Keogh and John Smithers from 2018 to 2020. We have also the following employee appointments. Tom Ressler for Fire Department Lieutenant 2, effective January 1, 2018. And to Nick Strand for the Fire Department Captain 2 for the same date, January 1, 2018. There are a list of license renewals, 31 of them for soft drink, 13 of them for tobacco, <laughs> seven for amusement device, six for show license, five for jukebox, three for solid waste handler, and two for taxi cab. And then we, also the following equipment is hereby authorized for public sale as excess equipment, surplus equipment, 
We have nine voltage regulators and two OCR oil circuit reclosers. Then there's a correction for the city lease to MVAC. Those corrections uh, should have been, or are now, October 1st, 2017 to December 31st, 2018 for $2,976.34 per month from January 1, 2019 to December 31, 2019 for $3,035.87 per month. Plus the regular schedule of disbursements for November 22nd, 2017 through December 5th, 2017. Are there any comments, questions about the consent agenda? Susie, you almost had to take over there. I was, yeah. <laughs> uh, if not, is there a motion for approval? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Any other, any questions at this point? Call the roll, please, Bart. Aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved. Next, we will move to unfinished business. The first is the final acceptance of the Broadway Water Tower painting project. Mr. Moulton. <clears throat> Mayor Zeman and City Council, um, this year we did the Broadway Water Tower, straightened out the paint issues that we had there both interior exterior um, as you guys are aware we did a little bit of work with how we put that bid package together and we feel good about the project in whole and what we got for our money um, project went as planned there there was one change order that was required during the course of the project which was eleven thousand dollars we had to do some additional caulking inside on the upper seams of the water tower um, something that we knew was there we didn't know how much would come off when we did the sandblasting but uh, a lot of the old caulk did come off after 15 years uh, and then from that process it required that the uh, um, project ran about 14 days over on timeline again our goal was to make it seamless for our customers so that they wouldn't tell when the tower was out of service and we did not have any calls or complaints related to that so uh, our city staff did an outstanding job of making that happen um, part of that um, change order was a negotiated uh, $5,000 deduct because of the overrun and time limit um, your project came in at uh, 458,500 and uh, the only change would have been the $6,000 in change order so what I'm asking tonight is that you authorize final payment for 38,285 55 and that you accept the project as complete and we make final payment. Questions? Jeff? That uh, caulking that was inside of the tank, is that silicone based or what was exactly? Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but what, what it is, it's a caulk that goes between the uh, stiffener ring, and, um, let me back up, it's, a, it's between the brackets and the top, okay. and they usually don't weld those for expansion, so they use a caulk in there. Okay. Um, you could weld them solid, but it would be very expensive by the foot to weld that. So hmm. we use caulk, it's very cheap to use caulk and something like that. Okay. Anyone else? Those are resolution, Mr. Mayor. Is Second. Second. Thank you. That resolution appears on page 44. Is there any other questions? Call the roll, please, Barton. Councilmember Piper. Aye. Councilmember Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next, we have the final acceptance of the 2017 Chatham and North 4th Street sewer project. Mayor Zeman and City Council, uh, we're asking tonight that you authorize final payment to WW Blacktopping that you accept the project. Um, as you guys are aware, uh, we did quite a bit of work in the intersection at 4th and Chatham this year. Um, not only did WW come in and do an outstanding job on correcting the stormwater and drainage issues there, but city staff will also replace some water main valves and a hydrant in that area so that we should have a, a good intersection there for the base of our pool entry for a long, long time. Um, the project did come in under budget. It was $977.50, and that was due to a couple of issues that uh, staff identified during the course of that work that they were able to work with a contractor on and reduce some of the quantities. Um, I have a resolution on page 47. Uh, everything has gone as planned, and we're asking that you accept the project and authorize final payment. 
<laughs> Questions? Under budget. The resolution authorizing final acceptance of the 2017 Chatham and North 4th Street Storm Sewer Improvement Project. It's on page 47. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions now? Call roll, please. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. That concludes our unfinished business. We will move to new business. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Uh, first up, we have the uh, 2017 levy, payable 2018. Mayor and Council, again, we have a regular item here for the 2018 budget and levy. We do this um, each year to put a plan out there for our budgets and to do a final levy to the county for the 2018 taxes payable. As you remember, we cannot reduce, or we cannot increase the value of the levy from our September, and this budget is proposing that we maintain the budget at the same level of what our September one was. The um, projected tax increase that we had seen earlier um, is a increase from that point so we have a tax capacity value that has went up 6.36 percent for the 2018 year um, <clears throat> the total increase for the levy is two hundred eight thousand three hundred eighteen dollars there is additional debt of about forty eight hundred dollars there's $50,000 in there for library <coughs> services, and then an increase of about $203,000 for the general fund activities. The September projection for a tax rate uh, was 51.64. This budget and levy is being proposed to have a tax rate of 50.01. And just to have um, some discussion that we share during workshops, Every $10,000 of levy increase or decrease would change that tax rate by a point two. In this levy, we have debt, but we do not have operational levy costs for the community center. As I indicated, we have an additional 50000 for library. The community center is one that we do not fund with a levy for its operation piece. <coughs> To give you a little bit of how the taxes are calculated, the market value of a parcel times the state tax classification rate multiplied by your tax rate will give you your city taxes. In our calculation here on the overhead, we do have another factor that comes into play, which is the exclusion, market value exclusion. And so the differences that you see when you compare 2017 to 2018 with the same valuation, the increase is $11.61 for a home of $150,000 value. So then if you take that at a 5% increase in market value, that new increase of $7,500, that is being taxed at the full tax rate of 1% of the state classification. And so therefore, when you see the amount changing with a 5% increase on market value, goes from goes up to $52.49. That is due to the fact that that sold same, the whole $7,500 is being taxed. Whereas in the first calculation, you've got that exclusion deduction mm -hmm. coming right off the front. So that's a little explanation of that. Yes, we had that question, so that's good to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, another comparison that we've done um, at times is the $250,000 business. They would see an increase of $39.07 for the year in 2018. The general fund, we have revenues that are being projected um, about $900,000 more than the um, the budget. Um, that's in part due to taxes, um, permits, and local government aid. In the ex 
expenditures. Well, I keep hitting the wrong button. The expenditures, these are all the departmental um, numbers for history for each of the departments that we have in the general fund. We have some changes that we are proposing for 2018. Those are indicated um, on pages 49 and 50 of our memo, which includes some of the highlights. Um, in 2018, we do have a senior center coordinator contract um, that has gone away with Nicola County, and now we have an employee in that um, position. The municipal building maintenance in 2018 includes some carpet repairs and repairs and maintenance, about $26,000. Also in our transfers, which is towards the bottom right-hand side of your pay, of the overhead up there, we have a transfer of about $100,000 to um, provide for pedestrian safety sidewalks. We have $419,000 that is being transferred to fund the Community Spirit Park up at the new high school. And we also have $100,000 set aside for the construction of the Minnesota Square Pavilion. In this budget, we also have $7,500 that is being allocated to the fire department. Um, that is going to be for replacement of equipment. The revenues for permits will see an increase in 2018. <laughs> Cable franchise fees that are allocated to general fund, we'll see a decrease in that. We have allocated more funding to our public access um, of those charges. And we also will see an increase for programs in the recreation department. Um, we're anticipating about $10,000, trying to get each of the programs to about a 40, 60% split of how it's funded taxes versus registration fees. Health insurance is an impact for the 2018 budget. We have a 15.2% increase on that. And then we also have <clears throat> some of the tools that we use and talk about each of our workshops on page 52. These are some of the same things that we use year to year. The enterprise fund budget transfers of 6.5% of the utility sales will transfer to the general fund to help fund operations. Mm -hmm. We had wage modifications in there for union and non-union of less than 3%. We typically would have a fire relief contribution and for 2018 our schedule 3 has now also um, indicated that there is no contribution necessary for the, for the fire relief. We have the one-time transfers of the $619,000. Local government aid was increased $76,201. And then also we had planned for a fire truck purchase. We are anticipating a $60,000 grant to help fund that um, fire truck. 60000 I'm sorry, is the match that is coming from the city, which we will be able to fund through our fire calls fund. So every year, or when there's an incident of a fire call, the fees collected on that is into the fire department fund. And we have about $86,000 in that fund right now. And so the $60,000 would be able to come out of there for our local share. Um, in 2018, in Equipment certificate is anticipated for, for purchase of a tandem dump truck, replacement of a pickup, and the pool repainting and caulking. <laughs> the reserves. In 2018, we are proposing that we have a reserve percentage of 46.5%. Again, we speak of the, our fund balance policy, which indicates that we want to have that between 35 and 50 percent. And with our transfers, we have it to 46.5. We speak, we spoke before in workshops about this transfer of the $600,000, and we anticipated that due to the fact that we have some one-time revenues that have made that possible, we are planning to use those transfers 
as a one-time expenditure. And so those are matching up here for the 2018 year. <clears throat> On the overhead there, you'll see that the ending fund balance of $3,476,721 would be the reserve amount. And again, the reason of the 46.5% is that we do have property taxes, local government aid paid to the city just twice a year. <clears throat> And so that percentage allows us to have cash flow to get to that next um, payment from those two sources. <coughs> Some other things that um, we have mentioned in our workshops is the utility funds, the electric will be seeing an increase on rates in January 2018, as well as there is a refuse fund budget that will be needing to come to you, and it is likely to see an increase as well. So those are two other factors of things that are happening to our properties. A couple of the things that are not in this budget plan would be the additional cost of construction on the Minnesota Square Pavilion. Amoresco has been a project that we spoke in the past about. They're doing some energy efficiencies and that project is not in this budget as it is being um, funded and um, in the electric and wastewater funds. The savings on that project should be sufficient to fund the debt service that we have. <clears throat> when those budgets are presented, Mayor? Okay. Yeah, right. when, when those budgets are presented, will it show those items separately so we can see how Amoresco is panning out? Yes, in, a, in a, the best sense that we can. <laughs> it's going to show in the regular departments. So the general fund has all the park facilities, all the city hall buildings. Those are going to be the charges that are utilities. And then each month we transfer that amount from those utility funds. So the savings eventually goes to the utility, and so we should be able to track it. Um, we will go through our first guaranteed savings audit with Amoresco once they have a year of operation going. Mm -hmm. And so we'll make sure we'll be able to try to identify it there. Um, we've spoke about Township 361, which is the road that goes on the west side of the new high school out past the park. And so there's um, an application being presented for funding on that. And so until we know what construction costs are there, again, there's no funding in this budget. There is going to be a remaining deficit in the Community Spirit Park, which we're anticipated more revenues to come here in the near future to fund that and then with whatever balance might be uh, left we would address at a later date and then also you got some ideas of uh, city buildings or field houses that um, have been talked or discussed and so therefore those are not in this budget as well on page 60 we have a budget for the library the library is in need of some changes and so the anticipation in the 2018 year is some, we'll see some of those changes. We have increased the levy for 2018, and we um, may be doing that again in 2019. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. Um, we, I thought Nicollet County was going to increase their contributions. Mm -hmm. I thought, uh, am I re remembering that wrong? Yes. Sorry about that, Roger. Yes, uh, we have had that discussion and encourage them to make a change, but they have not committed to a change. Um, at the last time we had a joint meeting, it was part of the discussion. They had already been through their preliminary uh, levy process, and so I'm not kind of making rationale or right. providing reasoning for their thought process. Um, certainly we provided them with data and would hope that it might change in the 2019 year, but for the 2018 year they were static. I thought Swanson said something about trying to increase it. That's kind of what I'm remembering. I know they didn't have an official motion, but I thought that was a chatter there. It'd be nice to see them do that. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that the amount of money that they provided to the library has either been static or gone down over the past 10 years. And um, their utilization continues to be on a par that, that is similar to what we've seen as a percentage of usage over the last 10 years compared to um, St. Peter residents that have library cards. And so it'd be my hope that they would make at least some adjustments right now 
um, forgive me for not remembering the exact number of Paula might have it at the tip of her tongue there, but it's forty-one, I think, thousand dollars is what they provide, if I remember that correctly. Uh, I believe it's forty-six. Thank 46. you, Paul. Forty-six. Yeah. Okay. So the library fund, um, like I said, <coughs> their reserve is going to next to nothing, and so again, two thousand and eighteen will be addressing that. The 2018 Community Center Fund, all services are remaining the same for that. The one big factor in that fund is that we had an agreement with Consolidated Communications, and that agreement ended May of 2017. So that source of revenues that has come into the fund has now been um, taken away. And so, again, more discussion going into the future as to how that develops. Um, we have some debt that's going to be coming off. Um, becoming paid off here in the near future and so then again we may be allocating some of the funding from that into the community center as well the utility services of the community center is reimbursed 75 percent by the utility funds and the reserves for the community center are ending at 41.7 percent the other budgets that we are going to be approving on page 130 um, are also transactions that we do on a regular basis our tax increment debt service capital and trust funds are all anticipated to have a budget approved for those as well as the general fund one of the special revenue funds that we have we speak of um, quite often when we have have the budget discussion is our insurance pool fund and there are no contributions going into the insurance pooling fund in 2018. We do have a balance of about $216,000 uh, projected for the end of 2017. I, to just summarize what we do with this fund is we increased our deductible and therefore any of that deductible that is needed for a claim will come out of this insurance fund each year, each incident. And so as it would go we'll always have expenses and right now we don't have a new revenue source for that so again we have a balance of 216,000 in there we had anticipated wanting that to hold at about 300 hmm. some of the information we have some here on graphs that kind of give a summary in a picture the 2018 revenues versus expenditures over the last five years has shown that we pretty much have some um, well-matched um, budgets here the 2018 <coughs> proposed budget has a uh, revenue is a little higher as this doesn't include the um, transfer amounts so this would be based on operations the 2017 versus 2018 budgets that we see here are compared you'll notice that the largest share of the revenues do show up here in state aids property taxes and um, utility transfers here's a five-year um, summary of the revenues in the major categories of our taxes licensing state aids police and fire fees recreation fees and transfers you'll see that in 2018 again we have um, a larger blip here in the um, license permits and admin um, that is due to a lot of um, building that we are seeing at the moment and so with the fees um, that has that is a part of our one-time revenues that we're seeing the history here for expenditures this is again a state classification that we submit on our audit uh, general government versus public safety public works recreation leisure and some other again um, it indicates how each year has performed And our last graph, we have a pie chart here of service type expenditures. So if we 
group everything on personnel services to office, professional repairs, capitals, and transfers. Um, you'll see that our greatest share here, of course, is 64% personnel. So we're driven a lot. We um, get a lot of stuff done with the staff that we have. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So on page 128, 129, and 130, we do have two resolutions. The first one being that we adopt a levy certified to the county here in December. The second resolution is the budget of $12,287,189 for all funds. <coughs> and so the general fund is part of that fund, which is indicated on the top section of that. So I can answer any questions. Anyone? Mayor Member. Oh, I'm sorry. Susan. If we can go back a whole bunch of slides to the part where we were talking about the average increase for the average homeowner at various levels, one fifty, two hundred thousand dollar houses. So I think it's just worth reiterating to everybody that um, you know. So we're looking here at a house of one hundred and fifty thousand as an average for St. Peter, and so folks might be confused about these two different numbers, and they. They're seeing the difference between that increase of $11.61, which would be the case if market value were the same, versus that 52.49, which is the change once you account for the increase in market value of your home. The majority of that increase is not coming from the increase that the city council is passing. The majority of that increase is coming from the improved value of your home. And so, um, I think it's really important to look at the, com at, at the comparison between those two numbers and to recognize that um, the, the majority of that increase is actually uh, to the benefit of those homeowners whose homes are in increasing in value. Anyone else? Mr. Kwame, no. looks like he disagrees. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I would <coughs> mention, um, for folks that might want to read more about this, Council packets are online, so all of this data is available online, and um, we'll also be doing an additional video blog that will provide some more of the bars and charts and things like that on YouTube, as well as people can watch and see this discussion of what Paul's presentation was on YouTube, or certainly on channel, on the, one of the pink channels, if it's seven or channel eight, on uh, uh, local cable television. And so we wanna make sure that people have an opportunity to see, and I think the memo um, provides a lot of great information about what priorities are, what you're spending money on, where those resources are going to. And so we'd encourage people to take a look at that. Jeff. Um, back it up a little bit. So we've talked a lot about this, so we've seen this a lot. But one thing that it kind of stood out to me tonight, something that we haven't discussed before, is about next year. So sorry to kind of sidetrack a little bit. But you had mentioned the refuse rates perhaps going up next year. I know we had done some things and we're hoping to do some things that maybe would change the work where refuse goes, more in the recycling, less in the garbage stream. Is that having any effect and that's why we're talking about changes into our rates or is there some other administrative thing or? That in itself is not driving the need for the, the um, increase. Um, the increase due to the fact that we do have higher disposal costs. The disposal cost itself has gone up. Mm -hmm. um, the state has, um, wants us to adjust how we tax our fees. Okay. And so that is going to cause an effect for that as well. Kind of like a debundling, what yeah. we did before with environmental services. Yeah. That sort of thing. They feel that we should be um, using more taxable values on that. And so we've hmm. gone through the process with them, and so we do have to change the, the fees. Taxable value? If you look at your um, utility bill, it will tell you that you have composting and recycling, which is a non-taxable fee. Whereas when you have disposal and pickup, those are taxable fees. And so they, um, we walk through some scenarios and they propose that we increase our taxable fees on the um, disposal pickup costs versus the recycling costs. Hmm. Who gets that taxable? Extra taxes? It'll be additional tax on that, so it'll cost our it's a sales tax. 
You're to the asking state. where it goes? It's a sales solid tax. waste tax. To the state. Mm -hmm. Correct. To the state, yeah. <clears throat> Jeff, is that more in line with what other communities are already doing, or is this kind of a new thing that most communities are going to be doing to start in 2018? Everybody does it this way um, if they break out their fees. Okay. Um, again, we are only audited every so often sure. by the state, and so they had come down and they had looked at our uh, structure and proposed that we change it up a bit. Okay. Proposed or required? Oh, required. It's a good <laughs> word. There's <laughs> <laughs> a big difference. <laughs> yep. Anyone else? Awesome. I have to care so much this day. Paula, uh, yes. we had talked <laughs> and kind of gone back and forth so, as far as the um, amount of dollars to put, you put into the sidewalk replacement. Candy, so and candy. last year we had set 2017 100,000, 2018, 2019 total of 300,000. We had spent about 147 last year. Uh, I just want to make sure that if we're we're now to the council, I guess if we're now putting 100,000 in here, that again, you know, we need to take a look at this and be very cautious of uh, budgeting and stuff for this fo the following year. You know. To stick to what we had kind of planned. I know there was an argument the other way at the workshop uh, as far as whether some of this work is actually pedestrian safety. So, um, unless everybody, you know, I have no problem with 100,000, but just I just want to, it's kind of a precautionary thing to make sure that we're sticking to what we say to in the long run. And this plan will come back to the council too. We've allocated here in our budget. Right. But when there's a plan set in place and the scope, that would be coming to you in additional. Any other questions or comments? If not, as Paul stated, on pages 128 and 129, get to them here, this is the resolution adopting the final 2017 tax levy collectible in 2018. Is there a motion for approval? I move the resolution, Mr. Mayor. Second. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next, we have the resolution approving the general fund, special fund, <coughs> revenue funds, debt service fund, capital funds, and agency funds for the 2018 fiscal year. That appears on page 130. Is there a motion for approval? Who's the resolution, Mr. Mayor? Second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Carlin? Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Next up, we have uh, Todd and the 2018 municipal fee schedule. Mayor members, included in your packet is a memo that describes how we do this, kind of the regular routine that we go through related to municipal fees. At your last workshop, you talked about this. And we went through them really line by line, item by item. Um, I would say that there, I don't know that there are any significant changes, and certainly any changes that are proposed in here are not things that would tip your budget over one way or the other, um, provided to be very short or very long in relation to your revenues on your budget. Um, but there were some modifications made in here. Um, I, I think from my perspective, there are some wording changes that went along with some of the public works fees to hopefully better explain those to people that are looking for those fees online, hopefully provide some more information to them. Um, we see some fees within the area of planning and zoning uh, that have bumped up really, I guess, maybe significant percentages, 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there, um, really related to the increased cost of publication. And it's not necessarily related to that the Herald is more money. Sometimes we're printing maps and other things that are just bigger in scope and scale um, than we have in the past. And so those fees are being modified to do that. You'll see a few fees that are listed in here that were modified, maybe $2, maybe $2.5 each, trying to be reflective of that every two or three or four or five year cycle where we have cost increases related to employees and they're employee driven, the amount of time that's necessary to provide the service that's involved. And so some of those have been modified as well. Um, I think, uh, unless the council has other questions or significant issues that they'd like to address, 
Um, certainly we can go through line by line, but those address the biggest issues and at your workshop you did go through them. I do have one modification that I mentioned on page 132. Um, these would be effective not January, I, I just have a typo there. It says January 12th of 2018, it's supposed to be January 1st of 2018. We'd want to make sure to have that listed off uh, appropriately. The goal of doing them now is so they can be effective January 1st. So Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to answer questions or provide any additional information, but it's my hope that you would accept um, the fees as presented. <coughs> questions? Oh, yep. let me mention one other one. I, I forgot to mention this, it's really important. One big section that's missing from this is transit fees. We talked about that at your workshop. Those are now handled by MRVT, and so you don't see this in this clean version, but the transit fees are, are now um, under the control of the MRVT board. Any other questions, comments? Not the resolution approving the 2018 municipal fee schedule with the change effective date from January 12th to January 1, 2018 appears on pages 132 to 148. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions? <laughs> Call the roll, please. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. <coughs> Next up, we have a revolving loan extension request for Chippewa Packaging and Mr. Willie. Yeah, Mayor, members of the City Council, um, tonight you're asked to consider the uh, extension of a balloon payment or balloon payments that are due uh, for Chippewa Packaging. Chippewa Packaging operates in one of the former Onan plants on Swift Street. Chippewa Packaging provides for the packaging of food grade materials. Um, they also have a sister company, uh, Seed Packaging, that provides for packaging of general consumer goods. And then there's a third organization, MS and GS Enterprises, which owns the real estate and leases it back to the two companies. In 2005, a $100,000 loan was paid or provided to Chippewa Packaging. In 2007, a second $100,000 loan was made as they expanded their operations. Um, so the balance of the original $200,000 in principal is $70,752.04. Uh, the balloon payments are due on December 31st of this year. Uh, Chippewa Packaging has requested that they be provided a, an additional 24-month extension of the balloon payment date. Uh, the EDA has had the opportunity to review the uh, finances of Chippewa Packaging uh, for year to date 2017 and then for calendar year 2016. Uh, the uh, reports continue to suggest that the company is for profitable. Um, the owner has uh, indicated that they no longer use any temporary employees. Everybody has brought on staff. They've had to uh, 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 raise wages and they provide semi-annual performance evaluations and, and raises based upon performance and attendance. Uh, however, even though it's been profitable, they have had additional expenses now as the Job Z benefits have been uh, expired. Um, so they have some additional tax expenses that they had not had in the, pre or the first 12 years of operation. We have received correspondence from the primary lender indicating that they are unable at this point to <coughs> extend additional credit to either refinance or to remove the city from the, uh, the financing of the companies. Uh, a subcommittee of the EDA has reviewed the personal financials of the two principals as well as their spouses. Um, the subcommittee would report that the personal guarantees would be of sufficient value to provide for the personal guarantee of the notes. Um, they continue to provide payroll. They have a payroll in, in 2016 of over a million dollars. Hmm. They provide uh, uh, consumption and payment for significant municipal utility account. And then, as I said, as their job Z benefits have expired, they're paying the full tax, uh, property taxes. They've made some significant progress in paying down the note. In uh, 2011, the balance of the, of the debt was $396,660. In 2013, that had been reduced to $164,216. By 2015, that had been reduced to $114,269. And at this point, the balance of the loan, the notes again is $70,752.04. Uh, when we were in this, the most deepest with the three companies, the city had a total of $683,000 financing the operations. And again, that's been uh, reduced by $610,000 plus. 
The EDA considered the matter. They have recommended that you provide a 24-month extension and that all other terms, conditions, and security of the note remain in place. Mayor Zeman, I'd answer any questions that you or a member of the council may have. Questions? I have a couple, Russ. What are their, what's their payment amount, monthly payment amount now? Approximately. Any idea? 1800 or something around there right, that comes to mind? Are they current? Um, they, they've not maintained current status. Um, what, what typically happens because of the delays they have in, their, in, in getting the cash back in, um, they'll, they'll miss a payment, they'll miss two payments, and then there'll be a flurries of three payments provided, and then they'll miss a couple, and then they'll come back and, and try to catch up. Okay. So, um, no, in, 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 since 2005, we've not had a stellar repayment history with the company. Um, of course, they struggled mightily in the, in the, in the late 2000s. Um, the councils have accepted for some time or interest only payments. They suspended all payments for a period of time. Um, it, it, it has not turned out as it was expected in 2005, right. but again, they, they've been able to successfully repay 610000 of right. the total debt, and I think uh, our actions or your actions have been prudent, and, and uh, I, I think uh, if we stay the course and continue to uh, be of assistance, I think ultimately we'll have the entire amount paid. No, I was just curious whether that was good. Did, did, the, did the EDA consider any, well, probably not a valid question now, but did they consider changing the terms at all? No. Uh, payments or anything? That was just no. just extending. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Roger. Do you have a, a sense from them, their confidence level of not having to extend after these next two years? It's it's a pretty pretty re regular history here. Yeah, the, the, the options, uh, Councilman Paris, are, are somewhat limited. I mean, we could go through with collection and essentially shut the company down and remove a million dollar payroll, a utility account. Um, yeah, I think, I, again, I think the actions that we've taken, although they're not uh, ideal, they have resulted in the continued repayment to the note. Um, I don't believe that, that they are confident that they won't be back in two years, perhaps seeking another extension. But over the last two years, they've been able to repay it from 114 down to uh, 70. So they were able to pay 44,000 of that. So um, I will say also that with the interest that they have paid, they've paid considerably more back to us than the 683,000. So they do right. continue to bear interest and the notes are repaid with interest. Um, is there any type of late charge? Yes, when they have a late, it's a 5%. Of, of the uh, uh, of, of the payment, so yes, and those have been imposed, and yes, we've collected considerable amount of penalties in these two. Right. Anyone else? The resolution modifying terms of two revolving loans previously provided to Chippewa Packaging appears on page 151. Is there a motion for approval? I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next up, we have uh, Russ again for some preliminary and final plats for Hilltop Edition. Yeah, Mayor and members of the Council. Vertical Growth has made application, paid the appropriate fee, and submitted the proper materials for consideration of preliminary plat and final plat approval of Hilltop Edition. This is property at the top of the Broadway Hill at the intersection with Broadway and Sunrise Avenue. Uh, I would say the west side of Sunrise, south of the St. Peter Islamic Center. Um, that property was annexed into the city by Emmanuel St. Joseph when they owned and operated the clinic, kind of hedged their bet on whether or not they were gonna locate on our hospital campus. So they ultimately, as you know, located on the River's Edge Clinic or, or hospital site, uh, and then it made both their properties uh, marketable. Uh, so vertical growth had acquired the properties when it was annexed in 2007 then the city council established a c5 or business professional office zoning district for that property um, they've submitted a plat because the property can't be developed in any form for any purpose without the adoption of a plat the city does not allow the development of property under a meets and bounds description so regardless of what the final use of the property would be, the first step would be to get, get it platted. In your packet, I did provide a roster of the uses that could be contemplated in the C5 district. There are three that are principal permitted uses. 
uh, including administrative offices, which would be a governmental type <coughs> office building, like a city hall or a courthouse. There's local utility services, which are pipes and poles of city utility systems. And the other one was, I don't have it with me. Cemeteries and stuff. Excuse Page me. 154. I'm seeing administrative. Yeah, C5. Group residential. No, local service. There it is. Daycare services. Yeah. That would be for children. Uh, daycares with six or fewer children would be a permitted. Every other use then that would be contemplated for that property would be listed as a conditional use. Um, and so they haven't disclosed what the final use of the property would be. Um, but the first step it is to get it platted. It has to be platted for any one of these uses. Uh, if they would apply for one of the permitted uses and they meet the building code, they meet the regulations of the zoning ordinance, they would be given a building permit without any further city council planning and zoning or board of appeals you know, and adjustments consideration. However, if they do develop as one of the conditional uses, then there would be uh, certain disclosures, diagrams, maps, site plans, elevations, lighting plans submitted. Uh, we would have to hold a second public hearing um, and the staff would provide a review of the 17 standards for a conditional use. Um, so the first step is to get it platted. The neighboring properties to the north is again the daycare and the Islamic Center which is zoned C5. To the south, on the opposite side of Broadway Avenue, is the Catholic Cemetery, which is a conditional use within the R2 district. To the east of the property, on the other side of Sunrise Drive, is predominantly single-family homes. That is zoned R2. And to the west, it's vacant or agricultural use for crops. And that property is not in the city limits. However, the future land use map would suggest that at such time as it would be brought into the city limits, it would be designated for one of the residential uses. Uh, vertical growth is submitted the preliminary plat that shows the elevations, the contours of the light lot. It shows the particular dimensions uh, of the yards uh, and a total of 4.32 acres of land. They've submitted a single lot within a single block. Um, the plat shows the proposed easements. Um, easement of 24 feet would be necessary along the northern property line, which is bigger than what we would usually require but to give us the ability to serve the property to the west at such times it may be brought into the city limits with the appropriately sized uh, sanitary sewer, we might need to be at a depth at that location that requires a much wider easement. So, so uh, we would require a 24 easement on the north property line, 15 foot easement along Sunrise, and then a 12 foot easement on the other two, pro um, other two uh, uh, ends of the property. Um, in conversations with Public Works, it, appears to be certainly enough capacity in the design of all of the public and the <coughs> private utilities to adequately serve the use. Um, the subdivision ordinance would require upon platting that they provide for the payment of a parkland dedication fee. Um, that is based on net developable acres. So if you start with 4.32 acres, you take out the uh, Broadway right of way and then you take out the easements that the city would be provided you end up with a net developable acreage of 3.68 acres 5% of 3.68 acres is 0 0.184 acres so that would be the parkland dedication there's no anticipation of developing any municipal parks in this area so the, pro the policy would be that we would extend accept the cash equivalent and based upon the last recorded sale of that property, that would calculate to be $8,022.37 in parkland dedication fees. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on the matter when there were no members of the general public that attended to speak either in favor or in opposition to the submitted plat. And then the, P the Planning and Zoning Commission ultimately recommended that you accept the preliminary plat. They did make one alteration um, one that the 24 foot utility easement also then be classified as an access easement. Um, now when I did talk to the applicant about that, they were somewhat aggrieved with that matter and they believe that when they get to the point of developing their final use, it would be undesirable to have public circulation in that area. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, Planning Commission's recommendation was you accept it with both an access and a utility easement. Um, Yes. Mayor, I'd ask answer any questions that you or members of the council may have. Roger. Um, the the parkland dedication fee. Mm -hmm. 
that's calculated on the original sale price? Well, I, I, it's, it's calculated on the recorded sales price, yeah, and that's the only recorded sale on, on that one right now. Does this not have a, does it have a different value as commercial lot of this size? Well, it was commercial at that point when it was sold for that amount, for 43, what was it, 43,000, 43,599 dollars per oh. acre is what it had sold for yeah, when the clinic had bought A buck a square foot. Yeah, how long ago was 2007 that? or 8, I believe that sale was. Yeah, probably somewhere. Yeah, there. not too long. Yeah. Undeveloped, at, you know, $43,000. But if our policy is to use the most recent sale date and hadn't sold since 1950 when it sold for $4 an acre, is that the price we'd use? That's, that's what you seem to be saying that our policy is. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's the policy as that's it was explained to me when I was hired. questioning, right. too. I'm sorry, what was that? I, I said that was the process that was explained to me when I was brought on board to the city of St. Peter on how Parkland dedications fees were calculated based upon the sale of the property. The last it's sale. The last recorded sale. So maybe that's something that could be adjusted after this, after this situation where if there was a last recorded sale in the last five years, we use that rate. And if the last recorded sale was further back, we'd use some sort of current, current assessed value of the property some, indi some indexing method and the county would have information on that and the <clears throat> changes that have been made over the years I think that that makes sense as far as the intent which is to provide an amount of parkland space that is equivalent to the amount of development that's going to be going on there mm -hmm. if we're using very old values then those values don't actually create the amount of uh, parkland funding to, to serve that size community, for instance. So I don't think we should switch it up on, on this instance, but I think that would be something that we could visit in the future and make sure that yeah. next time around it's addressed. Well, I think you know, the dollar a square foot uh, <coughs> is, is, to me, is, is reasonable for an undeveloped piece of property of that size. You know? yeah. I mean. Uh, we sold things with the Washington Avenue extension and bought things that we paid more for and you know that were sold for less than that so you know because uh, of the size of the lots so. we sell stuff in the North Industrial Park for a dollar five a square foot and everybody says it's a bargain yeah, compared it to what everyone else pays in the area yeah and that's I guess that's part of my argument is that a lot of those are smaller than this some of like two and a half acre sites mm -hmm and we're getting a dollar or whatever for it. This is bigger, we're getting a dollar for it. So well, we need a new policy in Susie's yep, definitely. suggestion yep. is yep. we the, should do The it. commercial industrial is at 5%. If it was residential, it would be 12%, so more than double. So, But residential typically would be associated with greater park utilization mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. yep. generating more of a demand. Yeah. No, but I agree, we, you know, we need to bring it yeah. up to the 21st century. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I have a question, sure. and I've been scratching my head. I think I've figured it out now. Uh, on page 154, where we're talking about a C5 district and the three uh, allowable uses, uh, administrative services, local utility services, and daycare services limited, you said that daycare services is for six or fewer children? Is as that what you said? Use, yeah. As a permitted use. Okay, so what that really means is that nobody is going to build a daycare center for six children. So really what we're assuming is that if, uh, that if a conditional use that was approved for the property was, say, residential space and somebody wanted to open up a home daycare, is that what that limited daycare service would mean? That's if, if they had a, yeah, they could open a home okay. daycare if they were in the C5 district. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what that would mean otherwise because it would be a very unusual situation for someone to... Yep. As part of the, the, the city's intent to encourage daycare, we allow them as a permitted use with six or fewer in every zoning district, I believe, with the exception okay. of industrial. I uh, got it. Okay. Well, but, the, but the Crafty Planning and Zoning Commission wrote this ordinance to require public hearings and conditional uses for Lots almost everything. Right. I so see that. So the public could have a voice. I see that. That makes sense. 
All right. I, I was just, when, it, when we were first discussing it, I was trying to make, to make sense of how those things would co go together. So now I understand. Just had to talk it through. What else? The resolution approving the preliminary plat of Hilltop Edition subdivision appears on page 158. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Pfeiffer? Aye. Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Aye. Councilmember Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next on page 159, we have a resolution approving the final plat of Hilltop Edition subdivision. Any questions before I ask for a motion? Is there a motion for approval? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Questions now? Call the roll, please, Barb. Council Member Harris? Aye. Council Member Graham? Aye. Council Member Harlan? Aye. Mayor Zini? Aye. 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 Hi. Resolution passes. Thanks, Russ. Next up, we have a city engineer designation. Mr. Moulton. Mayor, members, if I can, to, uh, um, Pete and I are going to tag team right. uh, on this one just a little bit. This is not only a designation of a new consulting city engineer, um, but I think an opportunity to thank our previous consulting engineer, Tim Luce. Tim is retiring from Bold and Mink. And uh, Tim was one of the leaders for our team on a number of projects that is frankly longer than both of my arms can extend. Whether it's from tornado recovery and did just a boatload of photographs for us and working with our insurance adjusters and fixing lift stations and electric locations and public facilities and park facilities to um, the Highway 169 project or water treatment plant or wastewater treatment plant or placement of water towers or development of the industrial park area on the old airport site. Um, Tim was the person at Bolton and Mink that I think, and this is very personal for me and, and for some long timers on the city council, um, he was the person that was assigned to take up Martin Mink's torch um, when Martin retired from service to the city, which was no small task by any stretch if you knew Martin and now you know Tim. And the uh, emphasis on um, the community and customers was very important. Um, Pete has a, I think, maybe a small story sure. that he was going to share. <laughs> well, I, I worked with Martin for about a year and a half, and that was probably enough for Martin. He decided somebody else <laughs> probably had to, had to get in here and take some things over. But as you guys know, Tim has quite an infectious laugh, and it broke a lot of tension when we'd be at meetings, and all of a sudden it a lot of eye contact would be going on and Tim could crack a joke or make light of a situation where things would flow a little bit better for us and make it work. Uh, Tim was, uh, like Todd had mentioned, uh, after the tornado did a lot of uh, great things for us. Um, one of them was transportation planning, you know, where we went out and looked at how the city should grow and could grow and Tim and his staff put together an outstanding plan for us. Um, also, utility improvements, he helped us establish the city standards that we use today and uh, did a nice job there. Safe routes to school and municipal state aid was another key uh, project that uh, Tim worked on diligently. Um, he really helped us out a lot with our MnDOT relationships and just his overall knowledge of how things functioned and worked uh, was very beneficial to St. Peter and we're lucky to have him. So even though the action is to do something different, and I want to talk about Jeff just a little bit, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if it's appropriate to give Tim a hand and thank him for as many years of service. He started um, in July of 1989 with us. Can I talk about Tim Luce, too? I think that would be up to the mayor. Because Go ahead. <laughs> because I served, on, I served on chair of planning and zoning back in the 1980s for several years, and at that time the city staff assigned to planning and zoning was not the economic development um, person it is now but it was rather the city engineer and so uh, Martin Mink sat next to me for years and provided all the institutional history and such and then it came time he was retiring and all and I developed quite a bit of respect for Martin Mink he knew everything and he knew where all the bodies were all the pipes were buried um, <laughs> and so when they brought this young kid in and he was a young kid I express, express concern to some of the uh, <clears throat> other staff and older uh, council members about 
Are we really well served by giving up on Martin and turning it over to just this youngster? It's going to be even better, I was assured. It turned out to be true. It was for almost 30 years. So I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if we give him a hand and thank yeah. him for his service. Thank you, Tim. Now, with, now for the business at hand, which is to uh, appoint a new consulting engineer. You know, Jeffrey's been with us for a long time and has worked again on so many projects. He gr has great attention to detail and has been in front of you on many occasions and really has been an advocate for the city and the community. He's not only an advocate for the city, but he's community-minded and participates in service organizations and you see him volunteering all over the place. And every fun run, I see him and his kids run by me at the corner that I'm assigned to. And so he participates in things within our community, which is very valuable to us. He's not only a really good engineer, he's a good person. And so the recommendation from our staff is to appoint him as the new consulting engineer for the city of St. Peter. That resolution appears on page 161, appointing the new city engineer, Mr. Jeffrey Damras. Are there any questions? So is this going to be an improvement? <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a like lateral move. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, in some instances, we're happy to have people that will stick with us. Believe me. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion for approval? Move the resolution, Mr. Mayor. Second. Any other uh, unneeded comments? <laughs> <laughs> Call the roll, please, Bart. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Thank Thanks again, Tim, for your service. And you. Jeff, you, Tim. congratulations. Thank you. Next, we have the 2018 polling place designation. <coughs> Mayor, members, there's information in your packet starting on 1. 162 and with resolution on page 163 um, this is part of the action that we take on a pretty regular basis to ensure that we're designating the polling places correctly this is in response to a modification to state statute and so we want to make sure that we cover this appropriately on a year in year out basis now we do not have planned an election um, in the 2018 year um, but but if there would happen to be one, um, this saves us the aggravation of sending out notices and doing lots of things potentially to people by following the appropriate process. Um, so as you may see, um, it is not our plan to change locations, but rather to designate appropriately following that modified state statute. And the resolution that provides for that is on page 163. Questions? The resolution designating city and combined school district 508 polling places for 2018 appears on page 163. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Council Member Kelly. Aye. Council Member Aye. Council Member Aye. Council Member Aye. Council Aye. Resolution passes. Next up, we have the 2018 non contract, <coughs> non union employee wages. Mayor, members, this is something that you go through on a regular basis, typically at the end of November or your first, first and only meeting in December. So this, again, as is explained in the documentation and as the mayor indicated, this is for non-union, non-contract uh, employees. Um, so um, what I am recommending to you is a 2.5% wage modification, and then there are about eight or so other additional modifications. Um, some of those modifications, as indicated within the memo, are driven by pay equity compliance. Some are driven by pay equity compliance and my belief and understanding and my gathering and analysis of data related to the work the marketplace is. And then there are a couple that are strictly related to marketplace and where I think we need to move. Whether it relates to strictly a marketplace driver or whether it has to do with evolution within that position that's pushed it in the marketplace in a different location than where it was, um, those are all things that are a part of it. Uh, we would not have any changes to seasonal or temporary employees at this time, but I will tell you that is something that I continue to evaluate and may bring back to you in the spring. As you know, there's competition and hard competition for those lifeguards and young people to drive mowers in our senior group that uh, rides mowers, and we want to make sure that we can provide those services, and we depend on those um, part-time and seasonal employees to do so many things. Um, I think the information in the packet is... Um, pretty comprehensive related to all the anomalies, as I call them every year, 
Um, and so uh, those are not only listed within the documentation on page 160 through 165 to 166, um, but also on the screen overhead. And so again, the recommendation would include um, for all those not listed here that are non-union or non-contract employees, a 2.5% wage increase plus the amount indicated um, in the memo and then in the resolution on page 167. Okay. Questions? The resolution establishing 2018 wage for non-union, non-contract employees occur, appears on page 167. Is there a motion for approval? So Se moved. Second. Questions or comments? Call roll, please, Barb. Mayor Zeman. Aye. Council Member Corbin. Aye. Council Member Piper. Aye. Council Member Harris. Aye. Council Member Aye. Council Member Curran. Aye. Resolution passes. Next up, we have the city administrator contract. And Mr. Brandt, are you I, going to I think tell I us something? Yeah, this is a, a combination of our, our discussions and workshops and our review of, of Todd's performance over the last year. When he started his employment back in, two, in 1997, part of the contract was that the city council would review his performance on an annual basis and provide him an annual increase of a minimum of $500. We did that. We, uh, the city council set forth and completed the performance evaluations as they have in the last several years. In those performance evaluations, his, his job performance went up. It, uh, compared to the year before, he had, uh, zero ones, zero twos, only one three, uh, 24 fours, and 225 fives. So it, the performance on the on general was uh, was much better, and the council was happy with them. In our discussions, the council gave me some parameters to suggest for an increase. I've discussed that with Mr. Prafke. The council's preference was to keep his uh, wage increase the same as the wage increase for non union employees and he's willing to accept that. So the contract that's been drafted in your packet calls for a two and a half percent increase. It stands for any questions you may have. Question. The resolution modifying the city administrator's employment contract appears on page 178. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Now any questions? I have one comment. Yep. Comment. Thank you. I knew it was coming up sometime, but I see that I missed the date. Um, I believe Todd had a very big anniversary just recently, and I wanted to thank him for his service as well. Uh, November 14th apparently was, was your start date. Does that sound like a date that you recall, Todd? I think that had something to do with the higher date, but I think my first day on the job was December 2nd of, uh, well, four months before the tornado, but yeah. December 2nd. Thank you. Yeah, we moved to town on January 1st of 1998. Well, happy anniversary. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Any other comments? Call the roll, please. Council Member Aye. Council Member Aye. Council Aye. Council Aye. Council Aye. Aye. Resolution passes, and I too would like to thank Todd for his exemplary, as it says in here, job. Next up, we have uh, the Minnesota Square Pavilion uh, project donation process. And Todd. Mayor, members, this is something that's been discussed by the council on a couple of different occasions. And at least from my perspective, started as kind of a brainstorming session at a goal setting um, event that you had in relation to providing an opportunity for donations to the Minnesota Square Park Pavilion. So you've talked about this on a number of different occasions and your goal for me was to develop some type of parallel policy to your current donation policy that would allow for donations and recognition at the pavilion for those who might choose to gift money to the project. I don't think it was the goal of the council to necessarily have um, this big force that goes out and knocks on everyone's door, although that might happen. Um, but it was certainly, I think, um, well-worded by many of the council members that there are lots of people that have an affinity to the pavilion. 
that they recognize it for their wedding or for a great family event or for the 4th of July or something fantastic that happened in their lives. And, and um, there are people out there that might be interested in providing resources for the building of the new pavilion. And so um, what you see, including your packet and the resolution, the, the resolution is on page 180, provides for a, a parallel process where money would be set aside for pavilion project funds um, if given in that way and that there would be two tiers of recognition. And, and you've talked about this a number of different times. And I don't know if there's the right answer, but, but what was proposed at your last workshop and you seem to grab onto was a 500 and above and a 10,000 and above recognition. And so well, if someone provided, let's say, $1,000, they would be recognized in that first tier. If they provided $50,000, they would be recognized in that second tier. Um, and that's how the resolution and how the documentation we put together, if you so chose. Mm -hmm. um, again, information is your packet and the resolution on page 180. Questions, comments? I, I do have something, and I discussed this with Todd a little earlier. Um, in conversations I've had with meeting some with some people since last Friday, um, and I, after giving it some thought, I, I think we're kind of pigeonholing ourselves a little bit by only having 510,000. Um, I think we should have a couple designations in between there because it, it was presented to me that yeah they they'd like to do more than 500 but whether it's an ego or whatever they'd like to be recognized but they aren't going to be able to make it to 10,000 so they felt maybe there were some people out there or businesses out there that just would say hey I'm getting the same recognition at 500 why should I try to give more so I what I would like to see is that we amend this that do 500 or 500 and to um, 24.99, 2,500 to 5,000, and then or 49.99, and then 5,000 to 9,999, and then 10,000 and above. Just because I think it's uh, people are you know if they're going to give they're going to give, but I think maybe that uh, having like I say more designations in between there would be helpful in some cases. Questions, thoughts. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean it, that, and it would, uh, you know, I never really thought of it that way, but a couple of people mentioned that to me. And said, "Well, you know, because that's a big jump." Yeah, it's a big. And jump. I said I'd support whatever Roger wanted. So, yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so, so anyway, I will, I will I move the, I will move the resolution with yes, with that. those changes. I don't know if you caught them all, Bart, but I was talking about. So I will make a motion. Is, is there a second? It. Thank you, Jerry. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Aye. Councilmember Harris. Aye. Councilmember Bland. Aye. Councilmember Carlin. Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Thank you. Next up, we have reports. And first up, we have um, if Mr. Paris would like to meet me in the uh, middle up front there. Four years that you have spent with us. Uh, they've been good, and hopefully they've been good for you. Been great. Uh, I know that a lot of times all of us don't agree, but as you've said many times, we always come to a resolution and we move on, and that's been great. I want to thank you for not only service up to date, but for continuing now with being on the, the library board. That really meant a lot to me that you accepted that to do that. Um, the other thing is that what I've noticed over the last four years is that you have stuck to your ideals and your principles and you've been consistent with that and I think that says a lot about a person and I thank really you. do appreciate that. So thank you, thank you again from the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sit down and do it if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> and show everybody what you got to. Show everybody what you got to. There we go. <laughs> the, the four years has been really good. Uh, I've learned a whole lot about how the city operates and how government operates. Uh, learned a lot about. Uh, different I ideals from other council members. Uh, it's 
shaped, reshaped some of mine as well. So I really do appreciate all the time that you guys have given me the discussion and thoughts. So thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, the only other, uh, I would publicly thank uh, Councillor Grams. He's not here tonight. I'll thank him personally when I see him for uh, being the mayor pro tem for 2017. And the uh, other thing before I turn it over to Todd, this is our last meeting uh, for 2017. So it's a little early, but I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And Mr. Pratt. That's a great segue into a couple of my items, which is um, cancellations. As you know, we won't be having any additional council meetings or workshops during this year. And city offices and the library will be closed on December 25th and January 1st. And the community center will be closed on the 24th, 25th. Um, New Year's Eve, the community center will be open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I've been down here on those days on New Year's Eve in the past where the gym is just packed. Mm -hmm. So get here early if you want to play basketball. Uh, there's just a lot of people that got to burn off energy at that point by that time <laughs> in, in uh, the Christmas or the holiday break at the school. And uh, we are closed on New Year's Day. Um, I also want to mention as my second item that uh, uh, we'll be having the official photo at the first meeting of the new year, which uh, not the workshop, but the council meeting on the 8th. So I want to make sure you're all aware of that. We'll try and provide you another reminder and make sure that that's set up. Our goal is to do that before the meeting if we can. So we'll ask people to come just maybe a little bit early to try and get that done. I'm trying to think, is there any more related to that, Barb, that we had? All right. Yep, we will have swearing in ceremony at that time as well. So the new member, um, uh, council member elect Johnson will be sworn in at that meeting. And then usually we have a recess to take some other photos and things like that. Um, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have for the year for you. All right. Anybody else have anything to add? If not, Mr. Paris, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn, Mr. Mayor. Second. All in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose? We are adjourned. That's it. That's it. That's it.